They came with their lasers and their radars, acoustic sensors, geolocation devices and infrared cameras. This was a chance for everyone and anyone from students to startups to multinational companies to come along, try out, develop and show off their latest ideas in defence against drone warfare. I'd say that over the last few years, especially since the crisis in Ukraine, we've seen a, a rapid advancement in drone technology uh, and their proliferation uh, as well as their ease of use. So anybody can use, learn how to use a drone and they have a variety of different effects that they can bring for the user so that they can be used in terms of um, observations or delivering uh, explosive charge or they can be used to uh, infiltrate enemy lines and I think that's only going to accelerate over the next few years. Right now, there is no perfect defence against drones. Until recently, militaries have relied greatly on radio frequency detection and mitigation. In other words, intercepting signals between drones and operators rather than shooting them down. But as drones evolve, these techniques become limited and new ways must be found. We saw a lot of promising technology. For example, we saw uh, laser technologies, uh, which are an emerging um, tool that we can use against UAS. We've also saw several technologies that have advanced in the last few years, so such as interceptor drones, that really showed that these kinds of events are, are useful in, in advancing these kinds of technologies. To help the teams develop their technologies, Suffield Research Centre have a secret weapon. They call them the Red Team, and they play the enemy drones. So we provide everything from larger fixed wings, such as this uh, uh, one here which has a vertical takeoff and landing capability all the way to something that is smaller like this DJI Mini 2 um, and everything in between. Do they have to fly in specific ways to do, do that? Yeah, so we have a variety of different flight scenarios that they can use, everything from a straight on attack to a swarm scenario where we have multiple different types of drones. You obviously have a lot of downed drones, what happens to those? Yeah, so we collect them and uh, they're actually quite valuable to uh, uh, military organizations where they can have a look at the types of damage and use them for exploitation purposes and intelligence gathering. Okay, so this is a selection of some of the red team drones that we've used in the past. Uh, for example, this one here is a first person view drone or FPV drone and you can see a lot of the videos from uh, these uh, being used in theater currently. They're a challenging drone because they are very uh, nimble, uh, acrobatic and very fast and uh, the operator has a first-person view. So they're wearing a headset, like a uh, virtual reality headset, and so they see exactly what this camera is seeing. And that gives them a very real sense of how to control uh, this type of drone. Any technology that is using a layered uh, solution where they have many different technologies overlapping each other, where one technology can rely on the other, for example, on the detect side. If one technology doesn't detect uh, a drone, the other one can then take over and relay that information to a defeat technology. And that's where we're seeing some of the best solutions is that layered defeat and detect um, technologies together. So if you have a radar system and an RF detection system combined with say a laser or a, uh, a gun, that's where we see the most effects. Suffield Research Centre now provides feedback to the organisations that took part to help them further advance their cutting-edge counter-drone technologies. Hannah King, BFBS Forces News, Alberta, Canada.